Rob uh, from the Powerboat Company and this is the all new Vantage BX240. Uh, 240 meaning it's 24 and a half feet excluding the motors and the BX stands for Blue Water Hybrid. Uh, in other words you can take this boat offshore and it's also comfortable inshore on the lagoons for leisure activities. This boat was uh, designed from the ground up to suit South African conditions and just to fulfill some requirements that uh, we needed. So firstly we wanted uh, the biggest boat that you could feasibly tow on our roads. So with the South African Road Traffic Act that limits you to a beam of 2.5 meters because your trailer may not be wider than 2.5 and your load. If you are wider than that you require a permit, a special permit. So we had a 2.5 meter beam to work with and then just with uh, traditional ratios that restricted us to somewhere around 24 feet uh, so that's where we've ended up 24 feet and a two and a half meter beam so you can tow this boat legally when it came to the design of the boat we wanted something with fuel efficient and also something that could uh, be have good handling in the surf and then also we wanted something that had a nice soft ride so to do those things uh, we needed to have a nice sharp entry and then also to have a decent handling in the surf we didn't want to have a deep forefoot so a deep forefoot is when the when the keel of the boat drops down deep here and what that does it tends to make your boat hunt and broach uh, especially when you're coming over waves and what have you so you'll see on this boat the forefoot actually lifts up so it bananas up to the front and then to make sure that we still had a sharp entry we then tapered the boat inwards towards the bow. So if you look underneath here, there's not much volume here in the bottom, especially back here where we've got the slamming zone, that we've got reduced volume there. What we've also done is all these panels on the boat here are all convex. So what that does is it's, it's a rounded shape and that reduces impact when you slam on the water. Uh, if you look at uh, aeroplane design, the bottom of the planes are always rounded so that when they do land on water in an emergency situation, that minimizes the impact. So we've gone with that. We've got rounded panels up front in the bow, um, all the way up to below the waterline. So you'll see here that we've got two spray chines uh, on the hull here. And what these do, it stops water from climbing up the hull when you go over a wave. So typically what will happen is water will get onto the hull and it'll just keep moving up until it gets deflected off. And that water moving up the, the hull will actually suck the boat down. So we've got two spray chines here that deflect the water off. That helps to keep the boat dry and also just keeps the bow out of the water a bit more. You'll see a lot of boats uh, have maybe got one chine here or they've got no chine. And if you watch those boats, if you go look on um, wavy boats on, on haul over inlet, you'll see the water climbing up the, uh, up the hull. And that's because there's no, no chine here. Also, some boats will have a, a rounded chine, which also doesn't really work that well. So this is why we've got a straight chine to deflect the water and keep the front of the boat as dry as possible. All right, so then here we've got a big reverse chine. So this also helps to keep the boat dry. Any water that has climbed up will deflect off here. Gives us stability uh, and also helps the boat to hook in and, and turn better uh, when you're doing sharp turns. So big reverse chine keeps the boat nice and dry as well. What we've got here is a convex flare on our bow. Um, guys are normally more familiar with a Carolina flare, which is concave going like this. Ours is convex, it goes this way. Uh, what that does is a few things. For one, it gives us a lot more volume up front here. So when you go over a wave and the bow drops down, all this volume is buoyancy and it will catch the bow of the boat. If you have a Carolina flare, your bow will just keep dropping all the way down to the top of the flare. Another benefit of the convex flare we have on the boat, it enables us to have a lot of seating up front. Because this is now coming out, it enables us to have comfortable wide seats in the bow. If you have a Carolina flare, it takes away from your space inside the boat. That's why you'll see boats with Carolina flare have got a very wide gunnel and small seating up front. So we get much bigger seating uh, for the size of the boat. So our transom has a 18 degree dead rise and then uh, at a 15 degree angle. So the 18 degree dead rise gives us um, a good mix between being a soft ride and giving us some fuel efficiency. Obviously to 
improve the ride, we've got a, a variable dead rise here. So up at the front, it's a lot more than 18 degrees. So our, the front of our boat is probably uh, has a dead rise comparable to a boat of about a 25 degree dead rise. But when you're actually the riding surface, you're on 18 degrees. This boat uh, being designed in Neisner and uh, having to contend with the heads and then also wanting to do surf launches with the boat, uh, safety is always an issue. And the biggest problem there is when you get water in your boat, the boat fills up with water and then the water can't get out your boat. So some guys with the closed transom, they'll have a transom door. But what happens with that is always the water will go out the one side of the door and then the side with no door will get heavier and the boat will flip over on its side and then you swamped. So the solution for that is an open transom. Is what we've got here is an open transom. So if you do get water onto the boat, it can all leave through the back here. We've got big scuppers, but your scuppers are never big enough to drain enough water quick enough when you get a big wave over the boat. So we've gone with an open transom and then um, to get away from the feeling of having an, an open transom, we've got this fold up bench seat here. So that makes it nice to stand at the back here uh, and uh, you can fish off the, off the stern and not have to worry about feeling unsafe at the back of the boat. So this then obviously folds down and when you're in the leisure mode, there's comfortable seating for three or four people here. Uh, it's also a great place to sit when you're running out to deep because this is the most comfortable place on the boat. Right, so this is a, f we're obviously now looking at the transom without the rear transom seat, which still comes in here, just to give you an idea of what the, what's going on in the transom. So we've got a stainless steel drain here. Uh, where, so one of the things we also hate on boats is the last bit of water that always hangs on the back of your, of your boat. So we've got this recessed stainless steel cover plate on the drain and this is then draining out to your scuppers. So it gives you a dry deck all the time, not that last bit of water hanging around, but at the same time gives you uh, the option of having like really nice big scuppers. Then you'll also see this boat's got uh, dual jack plates. That just means that we can run at a very shallow draft. So um, we know when you, there's, there's multiple uses for jack plates. Uh, one is running in shallow draft. Uh, the other is it just, creates a lot more efficiency so we can jack these up and uh, saves on fuel and gets a bit more speed out of the boat uh, and on top of that when you're working in the surf it gives you the option of dropping the motors down and give you a lot more grip on your props so that's why we've gone to the jack plates okay so for a multi-purpose uh, boat that's fishing and leisure uh, we felt that the hard top was uh, an important part of that of that setup and uh, one of the things we really didn't like about all the boats we were on was the fact that their hard tops all rattled. So we've designed ours. Uh, it's, it's, this is a 5083 aluminium plate uh, that's been CNC cut and then anodized. So this is 20 mil thick and this hard top is pretty solid. You can hang on it uh, and there's no rattle in this. So the boat can come right out the water, land hard. Uh, there's no rattle on this T-top. The other thing with the design, you can never have too many places to hold on to on a boat. So this design just gives you uh, the option of scrabbing everywhere and uh, that just adds the safety on the boat. It's easy to walk around this boat. You've always got something to hold on to when you walk from the stern up to the front. And then we've got on the top of the console here, we've got these little small finger grabs as well. So it enables you to walk around the boat easily and always feel safe. The other thing we found with uh, hard tops and T-tops is that guys use normally like a 50 or a 60 mil stainless steel tube and that protrudes out and it actually takes a lot of your space on the boat. So by having this 20 mil plate that's recessed into the console, we create a lot more space on the, on the deck of this boat. So if you can see here, we've got almost 600 mils, uh, which you'd normally find on a boat of a much wider beam. So lots of space created by this T-top design. Another thing on a boat always, where do you put your life jackets? So we've got a little recess here and a, and a mesh that comes down. So you can zip that open and all your life jackets you can stow in here. It's a, a great uh, thing on a boat to be able to pull your life jacket out and any jerseys, jackets can just go back into here. Okay, so here for the windscreen, we've gone with a eight mil toughened glass. Uh, so this is no perspex or anything like that. And obviously just a wiper for if you're out in the rain or what have you. Uh, it's just sort of handy to have a wiper there. 
uh, the full glass gives you a little bit of protection uh, in the cockpit there so when the weather comes in uh, you can stay nice and dry behind there. So when you're out on the back line trawling uh, or you're out in the deep it's always nice to have somewhere to sit so we've got this seat here uh, you can sit and watch the lines at the back also when you're going for a cruise sometimes people like to sit at the back and then this seat here enables you to disbrace yourself in here so it gives you a nice comfortable safe seat here. This seat then also acts as a step uh, you'll see we've got a ladder up to the hard top with roof racks up top um, and you can actually sit up there if you like you could probably put four or five people up there a very sturdy t-top so this is just your access up there because this is a family boat we wanted a nice comfy bench seat for people to sit on uh, it just means you can squash a third person in here if you want and then with the split bolster it gives the option for the captain to be standing while his passenger is seated and this can just be flipped up so gives you this position to operate the boat on and then your passenger can sit there um, at the same time you know if there's mom and dad and one of the kids that can squeeze in here uh, it's comfortable it's just uh, preferable over a bucket seat scenario where which look quite nice but they this is way more practical for a boat okay so we, earlier we talked about the convex flare that we have uh, on the bow of this boat and here you can see the extra space that it gives us in the seating. So got nice deep seats uh, with a high backrest. Uh, you won't find seating like this on a boat of this size uh, with the Carolina flare or even without flare. So it's literally just the flare that enables us to have such comfortable seating up front here. Because this needed to be a family boat, uh, it was critical for us that the ladies could be comfortable up front here. So uh, nice high backrest, nice deep seats and then the correct height here uh, for support behind your knee and uh, yeah these are really comfortable seats another advantage of the the deep seats like this is just if you've got kids sitting up in the bow it's nice and safe for them they're not going to fall overboard uh, you've got a full backrest uh, keeping them in the boat here so with the seating up front here you could probably easily comfortably seat five people and probably up to six people could sit comfortably up in the bow of this boat so also what you wanted was uh, a nice little of a casting deck for when you're out at sea and uh, this seating arrangement obviously also makes doubles up as a little casting deck and you can come here and you can still brace yourself and then we've got options for another a little uh, support pole here if you want to stand here and then further to that we've got our main casting deck up here on the bow um, again there's nothing cluttering here so if you fly fishing uh, you can have your lines here without them getting tangled up uh, anchor being stowed uh, below the deck here we've got nothing uh, in your way up front here and then uh, also you'll see uh, if you look up front here there's a mounting bracket for a Minkota trolling motor so the bow is designed to accept that so your motor fits here and stows neatly there and doesn't get into the way of your seating uh, what also with the mounting there is you can get the shaft of your trolling motor centered on your keel which just helps with the uh, efficiency of the motor because we wanted this boat to be uh, towable so that you can move around the country and launch wherever uh, we needed a decent trailer so we've designed from scratch our own trailer we've had our own um, aluminium i-beams extruded so these are 177 uh, by 100 and then 10 mil thick uh, gives you a nice solid trailer so you can tow with confidence we've also gone with uh, rub ride axles um, and then the trailer is specifically designed to accept the boat and make launching and retrieving easy Okay, so the trailer is, is full aluminium. Uh, we do have a galvanized uh, post up front here. That's standard on most uh, aluminium trailers just because of the extra strength there. And this part doesn't go in the water, so we don't have any issues. Um, beyond that, all the hardware is 316, so bolts and nuts are 316 stainless steel. And then this trailer is not welded, it's all bolted together. So it's designed to be bolted together. Uh, welding on aluminium trailers tends to crack over time so we stay with the uh, with the bolting uh, procedure and then also on the trailers you'll see we've gone with an oversized beam uh, that is because aluminium tends to flex and most tra trailers tend to flex so you can get away with a with a, a smaller beam but uh, we looked at a lot of the Australian uh, trailer manufacturers specifically the better ones uh, they have similar environments to us where the guys do a lot of towing and they've got some bad road conditions so they go with an oversized beam on the trailer 
that just gives you a bit of safety in terms of flex and what have you. So you can get away with a thinner beam and a lighter beam, but the uh, oversized beam is definitely a better option in our opinion. Because we wanted this boat to be good for uh, fly fishing as well, we wanted a nice casting deck up front and it was important to keep that casting deck clean. So we didn't want Samson posts and uh, bow rollers up top there. So we went with an integrated anchor. Uh, we've got, so this is custom designed to fit inside the bow of the boat. And then we've gone with a Lone Star Marine drum anchor winch. Uh, we will show you more of that later, but uh, that has a whole lot of advantages over the traditional uh, windless system. So drum anchor winch, 100 meters of anchor line, that can be upgraded to having up to 200 meters but on this boat 100 meters of anchor line and an integrated anchor right so obviously for your anchor winch uh, you want to be able to see what's going on so that's why we've got a glass door here so that you can operate the anchor from the console and uh, be able to see what's going going on there so if let's open up the anchor hatch here so here we've got a lone star marine gx1 drum anchor winch it holds seven meters of stainless steel chain, uh, double braided nylon top shot, and then 100 meters of uh, Dyneema braided uh, anchor line. Right, so here we have the tackle station. A couple of things here. So we've got uh, two rod holders here. These are fine for trawling, but uh, also what it means is when you want to work on your lines, uh, you can work here and you can bait up, put your lures on and what have you, uh, and your rods can just hang there. Uh, when you're fishing always and the fish are on the bite i always find there's just a mess of lures and what have you hanging around in the boat so we've got these places here to organize so you can actually hang your lures and jigs up on on these space for knives and tools uh, just to keep things organized and then we've got these little pads here so that when you're actually when you're driving back uh, your your jigs don't bang against this, the the tackle station and then you can obviously just spray them down here we've got um, 70 liters of fresh water on the boat so all your lures and stuff can dry here and then you can pack them away after so when it comes to the live well that was another important thing for us um, we wanted a, a decent sized live well and then we also wanted pressurized so this is a pressurized live well meaning you can fill it up and uh, it, the water won't sloss around and that's good for your for the longevity of your baits um, what we've done with this live well it's designed along the same ways that the aquaculture guys design their tanks. So it's self-cleaning. In other words, the water circulates around the outside and drains down to the center. And then we don't have a standpipe in the middle. So the live well will actually fill up and uh, it's got a, a pipe network here that enables it to stay full and circulate without having a standpipe. So there's no little hooks, nooks and crannies in here for your bait to hide behind makes things a lot easier and then when you want to drain the well we just got a little tap on the side here opened up and it drains overboard when it comes to rod storage uh, we chatted to the guys that do competitive fishing and some of the fly fishing guys and obviously the requirement from them was storage for rods that are longer than seven feet so the light tackle guys you know wanted to be able to put a nine foot rod in there and obviously for the fly rods uh, as well um, so we've designed here lockable storage for six rods uh, of up to 10 feet so if you have a look inside here uh, the rods you open this door and you can store your rods in here and then these can be locked okay so the other few features we've got in the boat we've got a 300 liter ballast tank up in the bow there so what that means is uh, guys want to do a bit of uh, wakeboarding uh, you can just you can fill the boat so it's a it's a pump in pump out uh, give you an extra 300 kilos up front there uh, to give you a lot more wake uh, what that also does is if you're out at sea and the, and the chop picks up, you can just uh, weight down the front of the boat uh, and that'll just soften the ride up quite a lot. So we've put that ballast tank right sort of in the slamming zone, just keep the bow, the, the bow of the boat down and sort of it sucks it down a bit there so you don't get that slamming on a, on a, choppy, on a choppy sea. It was important for us to have a, like we said earlier, have a nice sturdy T-top. Uh, this thing's weight bearing and you can actually see I can jump on this thing, it's pretty damn solid. Up here we also have our integrated uh, tow post uh, for guys that want to wakeboard and tow tubes and what have you. Uh, so this is integrated into the T-top. So we've got a full Garmin system on this boat and uh, it's also got the new Garmin boat switch which basically enables digital switching on a boat of this size. So you've got any number of switches and it'll actually monitor batteries, 
uh, does tank levels and all your information it can then be displayed on your Garmin. Uh, it basically gives you yacht functionality on a center console of this size. So here we have the full digital switching from Garmin. So all your switches are here on here. So we've got our T-top lights. Uh, and then also what this does is, so where we've got our live well, uh, it can be set on a timer. So you can turn the live well, the pump will run, and then it'll run for a certain amount of time, switch off, and then switch on again. So you can do that. Um, and uh, yeah, it'll, it'll monitor your batteries, all that kind of thing. So if we go home here, uh, it gives you our fuel, and then uh, also gives you a full vessel. So what's happening there, uh, and gives you all your your engine details as well. This boat is kitted out with a Garmin boat switch, so it's got full digital switching. Uh, there are a few switches here, so just for the jack plates and the ballast tank uh, and the anchor. Those obviously you want to have quick access to uh, on the on the dash here, but everything else is digital switching on here. Uh, it just makes the boat a lot neater and cleaner. The guy that's bought this boat was quite adamant. He wanted a horizontal helm, and uh, I must say. It's great having this on the boat. When you're out at sea, uh, it gives you a lot more stability when you're actually operating the boat like this. But what it does have is a tilt helm, so you can tilt the helm down, and when you when you want to sit and you can cruise, then it gives you, gives you the steering wheel uh, within easy grasp, and then when you're standing up, it just creates a little bit of extra space so you can operate here. The other thing we didn't like on uh, boats was having uh, cleats and pop-up cleats that stick up and are potential for lines to get hooked on. So we integrated our own little um, cleats here. These are through bolted into the hull and then we have a little system here with a, a rope and a clip so it's easy to hook this up when you're docking uh, and you don't have the scenario where you've got uh, cleats that can hook lines when you're fishing. With most boats you end up with a little ski step and ski ladder and what that ladder does is when you flip it down it swings in underneath the boat and makes boarding the boat very difficult. So our solution to that was uh, we designed our own ladder. Uh, it's CNC cut out of aluminium. And then uh, this folds down and gives you a nice sturdy uh, ladder to climb up. So if you see here, I can easily stand here. I've got some grabs and I can just climb up the boat. And then when I need to stow, I can just come here. And pull that back. Here we have a freshwater hose. Um, this is just if you have um, having drinks or snacks on the boat and you want to just wash stuff down it's nice to handy to have a little sink here and a wash basin and uh, this actually just drains overboard so you've got no problem with the uh, water sitting on board it all just drains overboard. Just another feature we've got on the boat is some nice bow shade uh, it's something the family always wants So we've got our two poles here. Just want to be able to put this up nice and easily. Right, so that gives you some nice functional shade up on the bow of the boat, easy to put up and take down. And then uh, you can actually drive this slowly with this on. Just makes uh, sitting up here, spending time on the water, a lot more comfortable. We build a limited number of exquisite boats. If you'd like to secure a build slot, get in touch with me via WhatsApp. Alternatively, if you'd like to arrange a demo, or would just like some more information, or would like to chat about boats, get in contact with me, my details are below. We also have more information on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for watching.